Okay, all right. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the technical session organized by Nigeria Society of Engineers, Manchester branch, titled Defense Innovation Through Effective Capacity Building, the Air Force Institute of Technology Experience. Our guest speaker today is engineer professor Mohamed Dauda. He is the provost of Air Force Institute of Technology, Kaduna. Our technical secretary, Dr. Akilo, will take a full bio of the guest speaker before his lecture. My name is engineer Patrick Obidoyin. I'm the publicity secretary of Nigeria Society of Engineers, Manchester branch. Uh, permit me to recognize a few dignitaries within our midst. Um, I can see Professor Fatai Anafi here. Um, you're most welcome, sir, and other profs and doctors in the house. We also recognize um, our patron, although he's yet to join us, but he's always here to support us. We recognize all ESCO members of Nigeria Society of Engineers. We also recognize um, our president, uh, the uh, president of Nigeria Society of Engineers or his representative on at the moment. We recognize um, chairman of our sister branch, if they are here with us or yet to join us, um, Dr. Ade Diran of Scotland and um, engineer Odunlami of NSC London branch. Today here, uh, it might also please us to know that um, the ESCOs of Nigeria Society of Engineers, Manchester branch, are uh, here well represented, led by Dr. Obux Ejokomo, the chairman, uh, the vice chairman, engineer Professor Adebisi Bamidele. We also have engineer Dr. Irene Okade, the general secretary in the house, as well as uh, other members of the of the executives. We recognize all members of NSC Manchester branch as well. Um, so at, the, at this point, I will then give the floor to engineer Dr. Books for the chairman's opening remarks. Take it on, chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Patrick Obidoni. Good evening, one and all. Um, I'm delighted um, to warmly welcome everyone to this um, today's uh, general meeting and technical session. Um, but before I just go straight to one opening remark that I have, I want to please deeply apologize to our guest speaker, engineer Professor Muhammadu Dawudu. Um, it is customary that all our guest speakers uh, are advertised on the national database. Uh, and for some strange reasons, um, I spoke to the ES about uh, three hours ago, and he said he gave the instruction for this uh, talk to be communicated on the national database. And uh, I still don't understand why uh, it was not um, uh, communicated. So please, uh, sir, I, I deeply apologize for that. Uh, I just don't know, uh, it's utterly outside my control really, but I, I deeply apologize for that. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Yeah. Secondly, I, I just want to allow, um, let everyone here know that uh, uh, August 20th will be our investiture ceremony because we are a young branch. Um, so the president will be coming to uh, uh, conduct that ceremony. So please uh, we'll use, uh, use this opportunity to extend the invitation on behalf of ESCO. I'm extending the invitation to one and all that you please come and join us come August 20, August 20th. Uh, please, you're all warmly uh, invited to join us in that uh, groundbreaking ceremony. So I think on that note, uh, without much ado, I would like to uh, invite um, um, Dr. Akilu to please um, read the citation of our guest speaker, engineer Professor Mohamed Daoud. Engineer Akilu, please. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening, all. Um, it's my pleasure and honor to read the citation of um, our guest speaker for today. Um, who is actually my mentor and someone I know very well. So um, thank you once more for um, accepting our invitation despite your very tight schedules. So um, 
Engineer Professor Mohammed Dauda was born in Portiscom, Yobe State, and in pursuit of higher education, he um, obtained, um, he studied um, MSc Production Engineering at the Amadou Bello University, uh, a further master's in manufacturing systems from Cranfield University, UK, a PhD in manufacturing from the University of Hull, UK, as well as several additional educational and professional qualifications locally and abroad. Um, he's held several positions and has garnered um, experiences from various um, activities. Um, just to mention a few, um, I would like to say that um, in order to accommodate one page, I had to do a lot of summary. So um, this might not be telling the whole story, but I do think I tried to capture some of the um, crucial points. So engineer Professor Mohammed Doda at one time held several positions in and outside the university, among which are departmental sewers coordinator, departmental undergraduate project coordinator, faculty representative to ICT, advisory committee membership, uh, member faculty of engineering, examination malpractice committee, member university orientation committee, member faculty of engineering investigation committee on department of chemical engineering, department postgraduate coordinator for MSc oil and gas operations management, member senate committee on internationally generated revenue, member senate estimates committee member ABU School of Postgraduate Academic Board. Other positions include Assistant Dean, Faculty of Engineering, Head of Department for Mechanical Engineering, Dean, Faculty of Engineering, PRO and Vice Chairman Committee of Deans of Engineering and Technology, um, Vice Chairman ASU, ABU Zaria Branch, and Chairman ASU, ABU Zaria Branch. Um, he's also been involved with several inventions, innovations, and has um, um, received awards as well, some of which include the Nigerian Defense Research and Development Award in 2007. He's got a patent on the development of zeolite Y from kaolin using novel processing method. Um, Professor Doda is also actively involved with several community service activities, including journal editorial services, um, resource person for accreditation at several universities for NUC, NBTE, and Koren, project coordinator for production of Made in Nigeria, Abu Feng, and the medal winning ABU car to Shell Echo Marathon that participated in Europe 2015 SEM competition in Rotterdam, Netherlands as well as in South Africa in 2016. Above all, Professor Doda is happily married and blessed with very beautiful children. Now on this note, I would like to hand over to our guest speaker um, to deliver his um, guest lecture. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Please feel free to share your screen and um, we're ready when you are. No, just before, just next to the minus sign. Yeah, the, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you to deliver the uh, NSC Manchester branch monthly uh, technical session. The, I have been introduced. I'm the provost of the Air Force Institute of Technology. And uh, just by way of, uh, 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 again, introduction, Air Force Institute of Technology is a university, federal university owned by the Air Force, but open to all the uh, citizens, both domestic and international. The topic of the presentation is uh, defense innovation through effective capacity building, the Air Force Institute of Technology uh, uh, experience. The, as part of the introduction, the 
specifically the topic is looking at the defense policy and the focus of the Nigerian defense policy, which is it tries to seek to have self-reliance for the country through technology acquisition, adaptation, as well as uh, development. Essentially, all that is targeted at developing indigenous capability for the production and modification of defense equipment. And by doing that, again, as part of the national defense policy is that it emphasizes the issue of self reliance which is the ability to defend our territorial integrity and national sovereignty without being dependent on any foreign uh, uh, assistance or nation. And to be able to do that, the defense policy has seen that innovation plays a very key role in uh, for us to achieve the uh, desired self-reliance. So as far as, as uh, by virtue of, uh, or rather as uh, context, intro, or, uh, as the introduction of the topic, essentially two key words here, defense innovation, as well as self-reliance. And these are the key thing that the defense policy tried to espouse. We want to achieve self-reliance, but it has been noted that we can only do that through innovation. So the aim of this project, um, of this presentation is to essentially highlight the Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology's contribution towards enhancing defense innovation in Nigeria. But before we do that, the scope of the presentation is as follows. There are, there are essentially five. First, we'll do some conceptual clarifications, which is essentially those two keywords. What is innovation? And then how do we achieve uh, uh, self-reliance? Uh, the second is the what are the defense needs of the armed forces of Nigeria will espouse that. After doing that, then we'll have an overview of the Air Force Institute of Technology. Then from there, we'll look at what are the key capacity building efforts being carried out within Air Force Institute of Technology. And we'll end by looking at the contribution of Air Force Institute of Technology towards enhancing defense innovation in Nigeria. So conceptual uh, uh, clarifications, what is defense innovation? In essence, within Nigeria, Nigeria's defense policy, it's seen that defense in the context of this uh, presentation covers the armed forces and other security elements specifically. And innovation is essentially defined as the creation within the Nigeria's defense policy the innovation is seen as the creation and application of products, services, and processes. It includes also the creation of new technology, products, processes, or services, as well as the application of an existing technology to a different problem uh, uh, domain. Essentially, manipulation of product services or processes to a different problem situation that is be being, faced, being faced. So in essence, innovation in defense sector in Nigeria is aimed at enhancing the capability of our uh, uh, military. So innovation is one of the keywords. And then the other one is capacity building. What does it connote here? In, in Nigeria's defense policy, capacity building is defined as the process of developing and strengthening skills, abilities, processes, and resources that organizations and communities need to survive and adapt in a fast changing uh, 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 world. Here, fast changing world, one can easily point to the different, uh, to the business environment. It is characterized by a lot of changes that you can see products, once they are developed, they need to constantly be developed. Otherwise, an organization can lose market share. So essentially it's the same in the defense sector, Due to constant security challenge, there's a need to evolve using uh, uh, innovative uh, uh, techniques and processes. Again, it leads to the improvement, capacity building specifically, it needs to the improvement of an individual or organization's capability to produce, perform, or deploy as the case may be. So, and the attributes of defense innovation are as follows. It essentially looks at creation and application of product services or processes in order to enhance our 
military capability as far as Nigeria's defense capability is uh, uh, defense policy is concerned. And then the attributes of the uh, capacity building is essentially developing and strengthening of skills, instincts, and abilities and pro processes or resources available to the armed forces as the case may be. So what we are trying to uh, um, uh, show in this presentation is that within the country, there is a clear relationship between capacity building in order to uh, uh, achieve the innovation required within the, the, the defense industry. And that is achieved by developing and strengthening the skills and abilities which will lead to the development of product and services that will enhance the capabilities of our, of our military. Perhaps if one talks about the capability or capacity building, naturally it's talking of the human or the workforce that are involved in uh, operating the, the, the uh, armed forces. Therefore, effective capacity building efforts will lead to enhancement in defense innovation, which in turn will lead to improvement in the capabilities of the militaries to produce, perform, or deploy as the case may be. So essentially in the conceptual clarification is to stress what is defense innovation and then what are capacity building? That is what has been done in the conceptual clarifications. So we now move to the needs, defense needs of the armed forces of uh, uh, Nigeria. Essentially, the uh, context of operation of the Nigerian armed forces is characterized by these six key elements. One, there is insurgency and terrorism currently in the country. There is issue of cattle wrestling and banditry issue of kidnapping. And then this, the first three are the prevailing, the most contemporary uh, uh, security difficulties that the country face. However, a little bit before we uh, arrive to where we are now, we, the country has faced numerous inc incidents of oil bunkering as well as piracy. Even though at the moment in the Bight of Benin, which is the continental shape of the country, a lot of pirate, piracy activities that is, uh, uh, is still ongoing. And then recently, again, specifically the end of 2020, as well as uh, 2021 up to uh, now, the issue of secessionist agitations has also been uh, noticeable in, in our country. And beneath all the five security challenges that the country faced, it is engendered by the issue of smuggling of dangerous weapons across the, our, our border. Naturally, the activity, uh, the happenings in the Maghreb, which is the North Africa, has greatly increased the smuggling of uh, weapons into the country, which simply goes to support all the security difficulties highlighted above that the country is facing at the moment. Therefore, the country needs a well-equipped defense sector to be able to cope with the difficulties, the six major security difficulties that have been uh, 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 highlighted. But it is uh, also up to state that whereas the key plank of the uh, defense policy is protection from external aggression, that is still uh, uh, a key aspect of the defense policy of the country, but it just happens that internal turmoil that is uh, happening at the moment tends to take a lot of the efforts of our defense uh, ar architecture into mitigating and containing the difficulties, security difficulties that the country uh, uh, faces at the moment. And equally, the Nigerian Air Force, as part of the as part of the defense policy, essentially now is that the Nigerian Armed Forces defense support uh, uh, equipment support is targeted at Nigeria's to continue to sustain her armed forces through massive equipment importation from uh, foreign countries. Essentially, in order to meet our defense needs, what is happening in the country, in, because the default thought of all national militaries, armed forces, is that they acquire massive amount of equipment in order to apply massive force once there's any 
perception of uh, 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 challenge, security challenge, both in, internally and externally. But the characteristic of our country at the moment is that we, in order to support our armed forces, there is massive importation of equipment from, country, from foreign countries. And this now make us to rely heavily on importation of equipment, defense equipment, which is detrimental to the development of the country, as it is a continuous drain on the nation's scarce uh, foreign exchange. Equally, arising from this, since at the moment, the, what is happening in the country is that all our defense need is imported. That means the consequences of importation is that the country is also vulnerable to the politics of armed trade, as well as international relations, which will be manifested through interference by the suppliers into the domestic politics of, 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 of a country that heavily relies on importation. Indeed, to portray that, examples are abound in our country where there is reluctance by developed countries to sell military hardware, including aircraft, to our country to prosecute the ongoing insurgency going on, especially in the, in the, in the Northeast. And in that regard, one of the key uh, uh, attributes of the uh, defenses of the armed forces is that the Nigerian defense sector in particular and the nation in general needs to find innovative work, ways to develop military hardware and equipment so as to uh, 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 mitigate the issue of importation, which is characterized by loss of scarce foreign resources, as well as one is opening himself to inter, uh, foreign intervention by, by, by uh, uh, countries other than uh, uh, your own. So there's a need now for us to look at technological solutions to our defense needs, and that should be developed internally. And through that, the indigenous technology will be targeted at manufacturing weapons and military equipment, which is supposed to be backed by robust industrial capability, which will endanger strategic, engender strategic independence and an independent national capability and power. Essentially, what is clear now, especially if you take, for example, Turkey, by relying on its own internal technological capabilities, they have been able to mitigate their defense uh, uh, needs and stop themselves from importation. And by that, they have also uh, uh, projected their independence. So what we need here in this country is to develop internal capabilities that will en enable us to have uh, equipment, all our military equipment, but that can only be achieved if we have a, the necessary industrial capability and uh, which will enable us to produce all that we be, will, will, all that we need internally, which will guarantee our independence and, and uh, 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 national defense uh, protection of our national integrity. So that is as far as the defense needs of the air force is, uh, of the of the of the country is concerned. So we'll now go to give a short overview of the Air Force Institute of Technology. This is, of course, I did not put the Google map to show you where we are, but we are in Katuna. This is the main entrance to the uh, uh, Institute. And we have some key attributes of our school. First, recently, we became a university in 2017, but this is by no means the beginning of our existence. But in any case, with that short existence of about three to four years, we are at the, at the moment happy to say, that, uh, to say that we are an institution of first choice by Nigerians that are seeking university education. Another attribute of uh, AFIT or Air Force Institute of Technology is that we are the only hybrid university and polytechnic in this country. But, Part of our uh, uh, historical evolution is that we started in 1977 as a professional military training institute. But in 20, 2007, we became a polytechnic. And 2017, a decade later, we became a federal university that is like any other, other federal university, but we have the attributes of a private university, meaning we don't have strikes, we don't have any disruption, 
indeed, the only disruption we had is the COVID, which has disrupted everybody, almost everybody in the world. But uh, once the, the country reopened, we, 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 we immediately reopened and we have been open since then. Another uh, characteristic of our school is that it's a dis dis disciplined and a secure environment. In, indeed, being a military environment, there's a high level of discipline and, the, and security. Of course, going by what is happening in the country, we are situated in a very secure environment that is devoid of all the security difficulties that is happening in the country. Of course, at the bottom of the uh, slide, you will see our URL, which I encourage all of you to simply have a look so that you will see um, so, uh, um, um, our institute. And beneath all of that, we, as, uh, as we know ourselves, we are standing on a tripod. We are a university, we are a polytechnic, as well as being a professional institution. In that professional institution, it encapsulates two training activities that takes place. One, there's professional military training, which is what we have been set all along from the beginning, uh, given the, the satisfying all the manpower needs of the uh, Nigerian Air Force, as well as professional licensing courses. We, all, we offer the professional licensing courses as part of Nigerian Civil Aviation uh, uh, Authority training. And by that implication is that we are then licensed by ICAO, which is International Civil Aviation Organization. By way of structure, within AFIT, this is the organogram of uh, uh, Air Force Institute of Technology. We are being headed by a commandant, a military uh, two-star general, and then assist, he is assisted by a deputy commandant who is a one-star general, and then uh, uh, there's the provost, which is myself, who looks after the academic activities of the, of the university. And within that, currently we have about uh, 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 five faculties. We have faculty of air engineering, faculty of ground and communications engineering, faculty of computing, faculty of education, faculty of sciences, and then social and management sciences. Uh, I must say, I said five faculties because at the moment, the faculty of uh, education is yet to, to take off. We are still waiting for the approval from the uh, regulator, which is uh, 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 Nigerian Universities Commission. And also we have a school of postgraduate studies because though we are three years, but we are by no means young in the programs we run. We have a thriving postgraduate programs being run in the, in the school. So the AFIT of mandate, uh, I mean, the mandate of AFIT rather as, as had been uh, enacted by the founding fathers is that we conduct research, run certificate diploma and uh, diploma programs and the graduate and postgraduate programs in various aerospace and allied disciplines. Essentially the key focus of the program within the, aero, I mean, within the Air Force Institute of Technology is aerospace engineering and related uh, uh, disciplines because the mandate is, uh, we got the mandate from the Nigerian Air Force. Our key raison d'etre as, as uh, we want to say it is that we exist in order that we produce manpower that will meet the needs of the Nigerian Air Force in particular and the, the, and the defense uh, uh, needs of our country in general. And in order to achieve that uh, um, uh, uh, mandate, we have the following uh, mission statement. The mission statement or our objective is to produce knowledgeable and innovative scholars worthy in character and learning through effective teaching and research for the technological advancement of the Nigerian Air Force in particular and our country uh, 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 in general. So you can see even from inception, the mission statement of the uh, 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 AFIT had placed significant importance to innovation. So both uh, in, in, as part of our training, the students are always encouraged to be innovative in coming out with solutions to existing uh, 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 problems. Part of the programs that are currently conducted within AFIT uh, scholars, we have six postgraduate programs the key, the flagship program within that is the uh, MNG, uh, which is the MSc in Aerospace uh, uh, Engineering. And I'm happy to state that at the moment, we are the only institute that offers that course in our 
our country. And then currently we have 22 degree programs spread among the, those uh, five faculties that I have uh, um, enumerated previously. And currently I'm happy to say that we are expecting approval from NUC in aircraft maintenance engineering, as well as uh, 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 mechatronics and other uh, uh, engineering uh, courses. We also have five higher national diploma and uh, national diploma courses. As we said, you know, we are a polytechnic university. Even by the definition of the NUC, they said that is how they uh, see us. We are a polytechnic university. We run diploma programs as well as uh, 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 degree programs. So that means at the moment we are regulated by two, um, um, all the two bodies, which is National Board for Technical Education as well as the uh, Nigerian Universities Commission. Uh, again, we also run five professional military courses, which is the uh, programs that have been running since 1977 to date, uh, targeted at the needs of the Air Force. This one as it is, whereas the other three that I've, I, I've, I highlighted before is open to both civil and military, this five courses is essentially um, exclusively for military uh, uh, air force which is all the armed forces and paramilitary uh, uh, organizations but i i will quickly state that within the student body for those courses there are also sister african countries that send in participants for the military courses and the last one is the professional certification and licensing courses which is being regulated by the nigerian civil aviation authority the ncc essentially this is part of training that is targeted at the air, at the air, uh, air civil aviation. I have just highlighted the overview, gave, gave a, an overview of uh, Air Force Institute of Technology. Now we'll look at the, uh, how Air Force Institute of Technology achieve capacity building. What are the capacity building activities it has uh, engaged itself right uh, from inception. Indeed, the capacity, uh, there are key five, uh, sorry, three key plans of the capacity building F, uh, uh, effort within Africa. The first is capacity building through knowledge acquisition, or it could be through involvement in research and development, or rather we, the capacity building going on in AFIT is that one is through knowledge acquisition. That is partnering with someone with a specific knowledge such that knowledge transfer will take, uh, uh, will take place. And then we also get involved actively in research and development activities. And lastly, through all of the, uh, uh, the two, particularly the first one, we have achieved domestication of the MSc in the aerospace engineering through the knowledge uh, uh, acquisition uh, uh, model that we have adopted. Essentially, the knowledge acquisition was done with Cranfield University, after which we managed to domesticate the masters in aerospace uh, engineering within AFIT at the moment. And so part of the capacity building through knowledge acquisition, these are the, uh, specific uh, outcomes from that. First, uh, relationship went on with Cranfield University from 2008 to 2016, through which about 63 master's uh, students were trained and 12 PhDs were also trained from that uh, uh, partnership. And it is, as I said, it is essentially targeted at getting the know-how such that we will domesticate some of the activities that took place through the uh, MOU with the Cranfield University. Essentially, the, the, that MOU the stated the way it was operationalized is that activities took place in Afitia in Nigeria, and then some took place in Cranfield, especially for the MSc. Whilst for the PhD, it's all of the staff were trained, did their PhD in Cranfield. And all of this manpower that have been uh, trained are essentially military, I mean, Air Force officers. And within that knowledge acquisition model, uh, two PhDs were trained at uh, uh, Leicester University in the UK as well. And uh, all of this is targeted as specific needs of the Air Force. All the training or the trained personnel were deliberately selected to uh, plug 
a specific knowledge gap that Air Force has foreseen in its operation. And also a relationship had taken place, an MOU to an MOU with the Technological Institute, Aeronautical Institute of Technology of Brazil, where two uh, Air Force officers were trained, one at PhD and another one at an NMA, uh, at an MSc. And then with the University of Aberdeen, UK as well, a PhD is is, was trained. So within this model of knowledge acquisition, these are some of the manpower or uh, capacity buildings that have taken uh, uh, place. Additionally, through that, uh, uh, also split side, some of the operationalization of the Cranfield uh, uh, MSc took place as a split side M MSc with the Cranfield, which afforded uh, afford, afford, uh, which afforded AFID staff opportunity to use Cranfield facilities as well as uh, to learn from the uh, experience experiences of the Cranfield staff. And through that, again, research project was conducted in Nigeria, which ensured that technology, technology domestication was uh, carried out, essentially meaning that all the projects that are uh, attached a part of the postgraduate studies, especially for the MSc, was carried out in Nigeria. So in that case, naturally, it looked at a specific problem existing in the Air Force, which the project now uh, 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 seeked, or the research simply tried uh, uh, to solve. And it, it is within that also, as part of those projects for the MSc, the research was tailored at developing a, a UAV capability in Nigeria. And within that, during the project, AFIT and by implication, Air Force ensured that it has acquired the knowledge required for the development and domestication of UAB technology in our, in our, our country. And part of the uh, 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 capacity building, as I said, through the R&D, because we said there are essentially three, knowledge acquisition, R&D, as well as domestication of uh, 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 programs, especially by the Cranfield University. So what happens within APIT is that all the staff within APIT vigorously pursue research grants from national, uh, uh, our national award bodies like uh, tertiary education fund. But as also is customary within all the APIT academic, uh, once there's any grant application that come out, both nationally and internationally, people bid for it. And with, um, it is through that effort at the moment in the 2020 funding, NRA funding cycle, we attracted four research grants, which were total uh, to the total of about 140 million, uh, which is around three, $360,000 uh, from the tertiary education fund. And then within the 2020 cycle also, AFIT are happy to say that we attracted four grants as well, which total about 152 uh, uh, million. Additionally, we also att attracted within the 2020 uh, uh, grant cycle that had been advertised by the Nigerian Communication uh, Commission, AFIT uh, also attracted one grant. And previously in 2017 also AFIT had a grant from the National Communication Commission. This is simply to demonstrate that AFIT is quite uh, passionate in pursuing any research uh, grants uh, uh, that, is, that is available. And as I said, we bid for grants both nationally and, and, and internationally. And if I may just digress a little bit, we call on all of you out there, the researchers, especially uh, uh, in the Europe, UK, in both Europe, which is but specifically UK and US and all over, even Australasia, anybody, any researcher that feels uh, uh, is happy, we are happy to partner and then seek for grant both within the country and uh, internationally. Equally, as part of the R&D activities going on within AFIT, we also seek grant even from the Air Force because as, as it is, Air Force, uh, has uh, given us a grant to develop a ventilator when the with the COVID 2020 COVID that came in and with the hue about the lack of ventilators, uh, uh, Air Force Institute of Technology had given funds to AFIT to develop a ventilator, which we are happy to state that 
it had gone through even um, animal uh, testing, not just developed in the, in the lab, but it had gone to the teaching hospital, veterinary teaching hospital in Abu, and it was tested on both swine as well as uh, 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 canine. And in partnership with Air Force uh, Research and Development Center, because Air Force has its own R&D unit as well, the AFIT had developed rocket launchers and rockets for which was used in the theater of operation in Northeast. Additionally, with, in partnership with uh, the Air Force Research and Development Center, um, uh, AFIT had also uh, together have armed alpha jets and helicopters that had been deployed to theater of uh, 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 operation. And as I said, as part of the three um, uh, 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 capacity building activities going on in AFIT is that the domestication of the master's program, as I said, at the moment, we have training of uh, about 75 officers, both uh, MSc, 63 MSc and 12 PhDs was carried out with uh, Cranfield University, but it was done uh, carefully and with an intent that uh, selecting a, a military university like a Cranfield, Cranfield University was deliberate in order to glean some of the uh, uh, research activities and programs that they run, which through that, as I said, we have domesticated uh, one of the flagship program, which is the postgraduate studies in aerospace engineering, which we had approval from NUC. It's been run and uh, through that again, we are intending to even seek for uh, the regulator to give us approval for the PhD. And also, again, as part of the capacity building effort, uh, there are quite um, a number of situations that limitations in skills gap, both within the AFIT and then wider needs of the country, we, are, uh, we, we, are delib we deliberately look at that and then make conscious effort to be able to plug that. And it's along that we recruited in 2020, 14 first class graduates and uh, employed them as staff and then deployed them to uh, uh, the MSc program in aerospace engineering with the intent of uh, uh, plugging a, a, a manpower gap that had been identified in the country. Specifically, within our country, there's a dearth of, of, of capability, critical mass of capability in avionics uh, 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 particularly. So some of those 14 first class graduates were selected and deployed to be able to do uh, postgraduate studies within AFIT, after which they will go for their PhDs in some of the, those areas. These staff members naturally will form the bulk of the lecturers and researchers in the uh, uh, aerospace uh, uh, related disciplines and defense in AFIT as well as our, to satisfy the needs of our uh, armed forces. So, Finally, we will now look at what are the efforts AFIT is making to make specific contribution to the defense innovation in our uh, country. I will uh, I'll do that by highlighting the specific activities that have been carried out within AFIT, which is that it's innovative because it's found a solution to a problem that hitherto and a specific artifact like as you can see on the slide, military uh, platforms, which would have been moribund, they would have been uh, uh, left out of service, but efforts within AFIT had gone on, which has solved some of those specific uh, problems. Like the uh, top uh, artifact you are seeing, the aircraft you are seeing, um, maintenance activities have been carried out on it, which hitherto it would have been out of service, but the, the, the maintenance activities that have been carried out managed to bring it in service and provide uh, uh, critical uh, air support needs, which is used for surveillance, especially for uh, the insurgency that is going on in the Northeast, as well as banditry and kidnapping that is going on in uh, uh, the Northwest and other parts of Nigeria. But apart from that, Part of the needs that we highlighted for the uh, uh, capability acquisition is that if we wanted to maintain it, we will have to take it outside the country, which will be a drain for the scarce 
um, uh, manpower, uh, sorry, sparse, uh, scarce uh, resources, foreign exchange in the country. So here to what would have been taken outside for maintenance was carried out right within the country and with the uh, support from AFID. Again, with respect to the helicopter you are saying, which is a Augusta helicopter, a, a, a retrofitting of some of its components that had been damaged, which will again hither to need to engage the manufacturer with uh, foreign exchange flight implication would have taken place within AFID. Um, uh, 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 that repair was uh, taken was was undertaken using composite. The nose cone of uh, as well as stabilizer of the uh, helicopter was replaced after being damaged in operation. And then complete waveform integration on Alpha Jet was also carried out by in consonance in, in relationship with um, for, uh, Air Force uh, Research and Development Center. This is one of the uh, uh, ventilators that have been developed, but there are two of them. The one at the left is the uh, static one, which um, those ones were moribund, they were spoiled, but AFID, within AFID, it was taken from the hospital and repaired. And then the, uh, the, the e-ventilator that was uh, deployed, which is a mobile one that is uh, 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 developed by uh, AFID, which is the one on the, on, the, on, the, on the right. So these are some of the uh, activities that is going on. So essentially what we're saying here is that both working on artifacts, military artifacts, and then also medical needs that is targeted at both the military and the civil population. These are activities through R&D is what takes place within uh, uh, AFID. And then as part of the uh, capability development in AFID, which I was highlighted before, that the relationship with Cramfin enabled AFID to develop a UAV capability. So on the top left hand, uh, top left hand corner is what was developed in, in consonance or in collaboration with Cranfield University, which is the first UAV developed uh, by uh, AFID. And then the second one, essentially after that, that all that you have been seeing, the uh, top right hand corner, the bottom right hand corner, as well as the, uh, uh, the, the two bottom uh, 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 which is the same uh, uh, UAV was developed outside of the relationship with Afi, with with Crampton. So essentially, using the top uh, left hand corner, the the capability was acquired, which enabled Afi or the Nigerian Air Force through Afi to develop the two the, the top right hand corner as well as the bottom which is that saigumi essentially amebo was developed as the first after which gulma was developed and then saigumi was developed again as you can see it was uh, uh, inaugurated by the president of the country so and um, as part of the contribution to the defense defense needs specifically this would highlight some of the uh, uh, r and d activities through grant uh, uh, support that is taking place within uh, AFID. This is a hexacopter, which was developed with the following capabilities, uh, a maximum takeoff weight of uh, 18 kilograms uh, uh, to reach an altitude of uh, 400 meters, and then to go up to four kilometers. And then it will have the uh, capability of uh, doing all of, achieving all of that and staying up to 30 minutes and with a very short rotor diameter of just about uh, 0.9 uh, uh, meters. And this is capable of taking a payload, which is a missile and deploying it at the theater of uh, 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 operation. And another uh, 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 activity that uh, is going on to in AFI, which is targeted at uh, uh, enhancing the defense innovation in the country is that this one is adaptation of gun system onto a helicopter. Essentially what, you, what is done here is that a gun system was, uh, 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 was integrated onto a helicopter, which now transforms it into not just as personnel carrier, but it can also do some uh, 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 combat uh, uh, activities due to the gun uh, uh, system that had been integrated on the on the artifact. 
again, so, some of the notable uh, um, R&D activities that took place in uh, AFIT specifically, which is targeted at enhancing our defense, uh, the, enhancing the defense innovation of uh, our country is that essentially problem existed. Those problems were solved not by acquisition of an artifact, but by within it, researchers sat down and tried to find a solution to it. These are some of the activity, notable activities that took place, development of a test bench for Edonia uh, 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 228 hydraulic system. Essentially, through the power the test bench, you will be able to test all the hydraulic power pack of the aircraft to determine whether they are still serviceable or out of uh, service. So uh, here's a tool. The innovation here is that those test benches are part of a man, like manufacturer. Uh, the person that manufactures the aircraft will normally uh, supply or uh, 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 present uh, 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 the test bench. But here now we have developed our own outside of the manufacturer. And then the design and production of static inverse test benches for the Donia, which is and as well as Alpha Alpha J, both for Donia uh, and as a hydraulic system, and then uh, as well as uh, 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 Alpha Jet aircraft, and then uh, installation of radio systems on helicopters to enable com uh, communication with uh, uh, um, um, both ground with, with ground. Uh, 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 control rooms, and then construction of a radio analyzer, modification of an Indian-made rocket for an uh, for for an Alpha jet aircraft, modification of communication cord and oxygen mask for an F uh, 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 seven uh, 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 fighter uh, uh, aircraft, and then fabrication of a, a protective guard for an F-7 drug shoot suite, for F-7 drug uh, 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 shoot suite. Sorry, there's a glitch. Again, again, part of, uh, as, as all part of the uh, suit of uh, activities, solutions that were uh, uh, developed, targeted at specific problems that existed include Development of battery card for uh, a helicopter system, redesign and fabrication of a tow bar for a, uh, an another uh, model of a helicopter, production of power chute for aircraft, repair of damage, uh, uh, Augusta um, airframe, compo airframe components, production of ground power unit for Donia uh, aircraft and super uh, Puma helicopter, as well as development of uh, wireless explorer for disposal of unserviceable explosive, essentially explosives that are unserviceable, the safe way of, display, of, of uh, disposing them, uh, a system, a solution was also uh, developed for, for, for that. So, um, sorry, Prof, sorry to just interrupt you. Um, I, I hope we're almost rounding up. We, no, 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 we usually no, try yeah, to yeah. keep our presentations between 40 and much. 50 minutes. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much. I will Thank just take uh, five minutes to, 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 to wrap up. Thank you, sir. Essentially, here, what is on, on uh, uh, what I will highlight here is the some of the uh, TED fund uh, funded grants. What this is one of them. This is an unmanned vehicle. The grant is supposed to develop an unmanned vehicle that will be used for agricultural uh, uh, application. But the key, the key innovation here is that this uh, 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 UAV is capable of detecting uh, uh, obstacles whilst it's doing its activity. Moreover, though it's developed for agricultural use, it can easily be reconfigured or retrofitted for uh, 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 battlefield applications. The next one is essentially developing an electric vehicle, which is to, uh, a, a, as part of transportation that can be used both for medical applications. It can be an ambulance, but that is using uh, uh, a solar uh, uh, power uh, driven, not just to mitigate, just being environmentally aware and conscious to mitigate the carbon footprint of operations. And then the last two uh, grants, 
that is within the first two are the grants that are within APIT in the 2019 cycle, which is total about 140 uh, million naira. Uh, the, the, the slide, what is on the slide is the other two. One is development of uh, a UAB as well for saving uh, for, for medical supplies, life saving medical supplies in, in battlefields or very difficult locations. Specifically, let's say when there's a flood or when there's a natural disaster, to use those uh, UABs to deliver uh, critical life saving uh, 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 medical facilities. The other one is essentially development of a UAB that. Uh, have a hybrid energy harvesting system. Essentially, the energy that the propulsion is coming from uh, 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 different sources of energy, but using both fossil as well as uh, uh, renewable uh, 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 energy. So essentially, in essence, those were the uh, activities that is, that is taking place in, as far as the uh, capability development within AFID both solutions to Air Force as well as applications for um, uh, grants where from any, any, uh, any source. So in conclusion, what I have highlighted is essentially innovation as a having that for uh, capability development. Uh, because in our country, our defense policy has espoused due to the difficulties we now have in acquiring artifacts, which is to satisfy all our equipment need. The only way we can meet that is through innovation. And that innovation can only happen through capacity building through our, our, our uh, institutions, particularly. And one of the key ways of having the innovation is through research activities that is taking place within the, in, uh, within the institutions, which will bring artifacts that will be able to meet our defense needs and ensure our independence and protection of our national sovereignty. Essentially, this, had, this is the kernel of the presentation to the, for, for the uh, Manchester branch of the Nigerian institution, Nigerian Society of Engineers. So with that, I will thank you for the opportunity given to APIT and for listening to me. I will welcome- It's 18 hours. Thank you very much. That, it comes to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Comments, questions, observations. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Professor Mohamed Daudu. Uh, just before we jump into the question and answer session, mm -hmm. I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. on, on, on your slide, there was a word restricted. Uh, I wasn't sure mm -hmm. maybe that was, maybe whether that was the reason why they didn't post it on the national database. I don't know. But just to get your consent, because we have mm -hmm a gentleman of the press, uh, a very senior gentleman of the press with us here, whether what you presented uh, is restricted. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for the observation. Uh, this is a traditional way of every document from Nigerian military is restricted because we are subject, there's an official secret act that conducts both I mean, all government operations, but the military specifically. However, for this presentation, I must say, thanks much, I must thank the commandant of the Institute Air Vice Marshal Ola Tunji, who had given the consent, the go ahead, and has supported uh, uh, me and all my colleagues for us to pre make this presentation. So. Uh, I will take it that within the limits of the secrecy, official secrecy of, of Nigeria, yes. So that restriction must be there, but I think the, I will clarify, but it is within, it's supposed to be available for all the members of the forum uh, for, your, for, your, for your use. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof, for clarifying that. Perhaps on that note, I will just invite the gentleman of the press to take his first question before I call on uh, our very engineer, Dr. Aki Andioye, followed by engineer Mrs. Margaret Oguntala. So, gentlemen of the press first. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Yamu, and uh, I, I, I live in London. Um, we work within the South South and uh, all parts of Nigeria, trying to get uh, better interaction between the diaspora and the Nigerian government. Uh, I have taken uh, the tech fund and, and the research grant that the Nigerian uh, 
the Institute is in need of, as you, as you stressed out. And I've just thought to myself, if, if you had a, a defense show of, of the things you've put together, uh, building Nigeria's military might, uh, the, the deficiencies, and what, uh, what sort of assistance you need, even as you've said, it's, it's high security. I'm sure there's a way we can tailor a program for uh, more people, more people to come forth with ways to raise the tech fund and the research grant and, and further enhance uh, where you're trying to go. Uh, that is my suggestion. Thank you very much, Osan. Yeah, I thank, I welcome that suggestion. It's very good. And as I said, as part of the presentation, we are happy to, to, to collaborate in any way. We are, we, we are happy to have any suggestion on ways of improving our capability uh, or, or, or grant attraction ability because th there are a myriad of problems that need solution. And the grant offers us a very good opportunity of developing an artifact as a pilot. Once it works, then it can be deployed to our armed forces. I don't know if I understood you well. Uh, if it's an offer for, for assistance in any way that we can attract grant, we welcome it. Thank you. I, 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 will, I will talk to uh, a prof and, uh, the, and, and, and the group, uh, maybe put something together based on what I just heard today and, and see how palliative that, that will be to you. Thank you very much, Yamu. We look forward to that. We are waiting. Uh, think, uh, honestly for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. Well, thank you very much, Yamu. Uh, yeah. Engineer, Dr. Aki Adiri, please. Thank you very much, uh, my chairman, sir. And uh, I want to congratulate the branch for this enlightening uh, seminar. The speaker has really done a very good job. I'm highly impressed that the Nigerian Air Force is carrying out this level of uh, research, and it is good. But I would like to say that beyond the research, we need to take some urgent steps to ensure that, well, the reliability of the equipment being developed is guaranteed, and more importantly, that we can duplicate and start to produce locally. That we can duplicate and start to produce such that we can mitigate against uh, the various restrictions we have from foreign powers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Engineer Kim uh, Adiri. Yes. As, as, as just as any engineered artifact, it goes through the, the, the as, as, as part of the requirement of any artifact developing, developed from our research activities, reliability is key. It has to be, it, uh, there are various quality uh, 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 checks it has to go through before it is even uh, uh, deployed. But I agree with you, the need for us to develop our capabilities such that we will produce our needs. Indeed, in the slide, if you look at it, one of the things is stated is that the need to develop a robust industrial product manufacturing capability that will be able to develop, I mean, to produce all the artifacts that came out of our research activities. That again, I am happy to state, uh, uh, Tedfon has seen the need and it has inaugurated another uh, uh, body to look at ways of uh, enhancing our production manufacturing capability to, en to, 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 to ensure the self-sufficiency that you have highlighted. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Prof. Engineer, Mrs. Mangat Ogutala, please. Um, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Yes, we can hear you, madam. Please carry on. Okay, okay, good evening. Um, like I said in my chat, it's I'm glad to be back in Manchester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God for technology, you know. So um I congratulate the branch, really. I, I mean the 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 innovation that you put in technical sessions, you know, bringing to four various issues and uh, topics, 
you know, for the benefit of, uh, of, of members and participants in general. And uh, for engineer Professor Muhammad Dauda, uh, you have given us a very good insight into what is going on. There is amount of research that's going on in the Institute. Uh, and um, I must congratulate you for moving from a polytechnic in 2007 to university in 2017, and now one of the best uh, few, I mean, the first few choices of um, institution in Nigeria for Nigerian, uh, for education in Nigeria. So I congratulate you for that. And um, well, it's been a very nice time. And um, I was in and out, you know, getting logged off and on because of internet connections, but I did, I did enjoy the lecture and I wish the branch many more successful outings like this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Rahman Abu Bakr, followed by Ibrahim Dr. Ibrahim D. Manu. So Abdul Rahman, then Ibrahim D. Manu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof, for this uh, wonderful presentation. When I saw the poster for the presentation, I was eagerly waiting or oh, looking forward to the presentation. And uh, I will say I'm quite impressed uh, with the effort being made by AFIT in terms of uh, innovation. Nevertheless, uh, my question is, uh, is there any research, current research ongoing with regards uh, to the use of natural um, uh, materials uh, for like uh, drone production or like bulletproof vest? Because uh, here uh, in our institution here in Malaysia, uh, two of my supervisors, one was able to develop a drone using pineapple leaf fiber. Uh, that was last year. And another uh, or lecturer of mine too was able to uh, develop uh, uh, this thing, what do you call it? Uh, bulletproof vest with uh, this uh, multi-layered armored bulletproof from coconut, uh, from coconut feather skin sheet. So uh, I don't know, we have all these, both uh, the pineapple and the coconut in Nigeria. And uh, the best way to move forward is by embracing this technology and drone is part of the things that are being used to fight or combat uh, this insurgency, terrorism, banditry and kidnapping. And uh, bulletproof first is something that uh, our offices use in terms of operation. So if, since we have this natural materials, if they can be used, the research can be done in partnership uh, with uh, some of the researchers here, I think it will be a good way forward as an innovative institute. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Abraman. Uh, yes, as you stated, uh, in one of the slides, the, the, the artifact, the helicopter I've shown you, you know, I said we replaced the cone, yes. the nose cone. Yes, it was used with a composite. Yes, we use composite, uh, a blend of the uh, natural fibers as well as uh, carbon fiber. But uh, migration to complete uh, natural fiber, it is ongoing but at the moment what i would say what even at even now we we have our materials lab what they uh, uh they have been using is the composite but it's not 100 percent it's a blend of carbon fiber as well as the natural uh, uh substitute material that you you have highlighted but the interesting one that you said the the issue of the anti-ballistic which is the bulletproof with the natural yeah. fiber, that is quite an interesting uh, 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 information, and I would be happy to, uh, if you have any only any publications arising from that, we we'll want to look at it and and also do some work on on that. As because as you said, we have myriad of those waste in our country, which we can exploit it to produce materials like this, which hitherto we have to import with a lot of money. Thank you very much, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inshallah, I will uh, be glad to share it uh, because uh, Dr. Jouaid, who produced this ballistic bulletproof, is the chief editor of the research journal here. So that he has made oh, about 100 publications. So I will try to find some and share. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ibrahim Manu, please. Oh, 
Okay, we speak, we skip Ibrahim and go to Ibito Yesa. Hello? You're yeah, on, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm, a, I'm audible, please. Yes, loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much, um, Engineer Patrick. I appreciate it so much. And um, I want to join other speakers to appreciate the branch, Manchester, for his um, creativity. And as well to appreciate our dear Professor Daudia. Um, like someone said, um, this is good, and uh, we are moving. And I think this is towards some um, technological advancement. I got in late because I'm on transit, but um, I want to give kudos to what we're having today, um, defense innovation through effective capacity building. Um, like um, engineer Aki Adeye said, I want to agree with him in details that uh, we need to go beyond research. And I want at this juncture that um, the Nigerian um, military, be it police, um, army, whatever it is, should give um, support in which we can be able to have it better for this country. Okay. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you very much, yes. Good, thanks. Um, I think just to ask one, one quick question and we'll make one quick comment before I call on the next um, hand I'm saying. Uh, um, in terms of research, I will share with you a proposal uh, after this meeting on, on air you. pollution. Uh, it's a very uh, new innovation that, uh, and let's see if, if something you're interested in, then we can take it forward because we are a, in the University of Manchester, we are a, a department of mechanical, aerospace, and civil engineering. So I think we already have things in common, but by default already. Uh, then my, to my question, mm -hmm. in terms of fees, because you did say that uh, you, were, you, you share things like uh, common with the private university and also the traditional university. So my, my, my heart leapt, you know, is this for privileged um, kids only or is it affordable? It's affordable. It's, it, is, it is for everybody. Indeed, uh, there's no any privilege. As I said, we are a federal university. The attribute, I said, of a private school is that all no strike and the attention students get is as much as the private uh, school. However, you are getting all of that for the price of a federal university like any other one. In, in the north, because in fact, our fee at the moment is at par with ABU, uh, uh, Kaduna State University. And so it's, a, it, it, it's because it's a public school, it's not a private school, it's owned by the federal government. And we are bound by that federal policy that no federal public school should charge fees. So no tuition fee, fee tuition fee is free. What we charge is just a token for some of the costs associated in running the school. So all I'm saying is that is there's no any privilege. And then we came in, all students come in through JAM. And let me state that unlike any other school, here you only come in by merit. I emphasize that by merit because this year, our quota was supposed to be 1,500 students. We did not meet that because the, and, and about 4,000 applied. Only about 900 were qualified, and by God, that is what we admitted. We never admitted one more than those that are, are, are not qualified. So, and even those who own the school, they brought their own work because they could not meet the admission criteria, they were not admitted. So, all I'm saying is meritocracy here to get in, but at the price of a normal federal school. So there's no any fees and you have excellent uh, uh, attention from the staff when it comes to the needs of the students. But let me quickly state that there was a staff, an, an academic staff of University of Salford who went onto our website and got across to us that he is interested in being a faculty on our MSc uh, Aerospace Engineering. That is just to show you how uh, 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 international in it is, uh, the program is. I mean, the, the, the curricula, the curricula 
you know, I told you it was, it came as a result of the relationship with Cranfield University. So essentially it's like Cranfield program that was uh, domesticated here in AFIT. So I hope I, it, it, it answers too. <laughs> it answers, but I'm biased that we have to change it to Manchester uh, curricula now. <laughs> <laughs> by, all means, by all means, I've been telling my colleagues here this, that in, in, in Manchester is mixed mechanical, aerospace, aerospace and civil engineering. So uh, Manchester, which is a world-class university, is the one that rightly we should also collaborate with. And I'm happy if you will, if, if you will come to us for, I mean, if, if you will give us the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, but Prof. I'll send that proposal to you. Now, uh, can I call Akilu? Just three more speakers, please. Three more questions. I'll call on Akilu um, and Dr. Ibrahim Yahuza to, to follow. Okay, um, thank you, Prof. Um, for me, it's it's one question, but split into maybe two two parts or three parts. So first is um, one, I would like to know what the plan is and to what proportion are you exploring the use of local um, materials or how much of local materials were used, locally sourced materials were used in the, um, in the generation of those innovations you showed us. Now, how sustainable is the supply chain of these materials? Because of course, if you want to expand outputs, then we need to think about the sustainability of the supply chain. And the last, which is not a question uh, per se, but more like a, a suggestion. So the young man from Malaysia that mentioned bulletproof. Now, Manchester, we have something called graphene, graphene which yeah. is the world's strongest material and the lightest. So, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are sayings that um, you could, if you could make um, bulletproof from graphene, then you could have bulletproof that are as light as our normal vest, you know, the singlet we wear underneath our shirts and still give you the strength, you know, so something as thick as the human hair uh, with that thickness. So um, these are areas to explore as well. And a lot of work has been going on with graphene. Um, so so that's that's it. But the first two uh, are, yes. are my questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Kilo. Yes, with respect to the uh, uh, materials that all the, here material is a generic, both in terms of uh, uh, materials that you need to create uh, I mean, metal, metallic, non-metallic composites, as well as other, let's say, electronic uh, um, uh, materials. As far as possible, within the limits, all the, 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 key, the, key, the key focus is once a solution is being searched, the focus is to, as much as possible, use everything that will be sourced within country. Within country here, it means you just go to our market and source it. Unless if that cannot be done, and, it, and, and in most cases, it is rare that you have to now source online. Most of the situations we find ourselves uh, for those uh, situations is electronic components. There are some we have to source, but I assure you when it comes to for uh, structure, Structurally, most of the materials we have used, those that you have seen in all, we have sourced it locally. The, the question is, yes, sometimes you can use a better one, but because of the need, the, the compelling need make us to use even metallic materials when you could have used carbon fiber. You know, carbon fiber is imported. We don't make it here but other composites that is coming out of local raw materials, we always use it. So this is just uh, 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 the position of our own innovation. But the other one you said about the sustainability, if we are supposed to, to make it, if it should be, is, is supposed to be uh, a manufactured good as an industrial good, most of the components that we are making, we emphasize that the supply chain, because it is locally, so, uh, uh, locally sourced, the supply chain is existing within country. But what I cannot guarantee, if let's say uh, production is ramped to uh, uh, a, 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 a level, maybe in millions of components, then conscious effort must be made now to develop it. But backward integration can be done to be able to uh, uh, provide it locally. But 
in all our, 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 our product development, we know that if you have to import one, what it will do is that it will distort the cost of production. The material cost will be very high. So as much as possible, that is, is, is a factor we don't want to, want to consider. So a short answer is within the available, I mean, within the number of our usage, it is, it is sustainable. We have the supply chain that will, that will be able to meet those needs. But the number, I cannot tell you the number, but I know if it's in the millions, then we will not be able to, uh, uh, the supply chain cannot cope unless we develop through backward integration to source it such that it's uh, meet the industrial uh, needs. I hope this uh, talks to your uh, question. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. And then uh, let me start by congratulating the Manchester branch of the NSC for organizing this wonderful you know, uh, session. Actually, uh, it's a very uh, good move from the Manchester angle. And then I will also congratulate my provost because I am part of APIT. I'm a staff there for the wonderful and excellent presentation. Thank you very much, uh, provost, for that uh, presentation. Mine, uh, after congratulating the board site, is to just call the uh, one attention that about the patenting the research. I know we, uh, AFIT, AFIT is excellent actually, uh, not because I'm part of AFIT, AFIT is excellent. It's uh, excel in the near future. And then protecting the inter uh, intellectual property is also important. So Provost, uh, what the Institute is doing in patenting all our research so that we can protect our intellectual property. Hello? Uh, Is it from I, Hello? I think it's for you, sir. Question on the uh, intellectual property, sir. Looks 